how long expected Jesus born to set thy people free. Good morning and welcome to worship here at ABC. It is good to be gathered in this way with you today. As we begin, there are a couple of announcements. First, there is still time to donate to and support Angel Tree Shopping. ABC's junior and senior youth have been shopping online and purchasing Christmas presents for children who have a parent in prison. To support this ministry, you can donate, you can drop off a check to our church treasurer. And second, as we enter the season of Advent, we as pastors wanted to find another way for us to connect. Starting this upcoming week on December 2nd, we will be gathering by Zoom at 7 p.m. each Wednesday of Advent. And we will be having Wednesday night worship. Our first gathering this week will be a time of reflection and general sharing about where we find hope and what is happening in our lives right now. You can find the Zoom link in your church email from last Friday. Now, let us turn our hearts towards worship. Good morning and welcome online guests and regular members of our Altona Brook Teller Church family. And who would like a pause from COVID, positivity rate and all that? I know our teachers, healthcare, and frontline workers deserve that. So, how about an hour of those familiar words from Isaiah, our reintroduction to the music of Christmas, and the sharing of the cup with our church family as we begin the season of Advent. Our time of spiritual preparation. Our service today will feature Kristen Falk with the children's story, Pastor Josh with that familiar passage from Isaiah, and our moment in mission, highlighting one of my favorite organizations, that which I had the privilege of accompanying to Nicaragua, MEDA, Mennonite Economic Development Associates. Let's pray. All powerful God, we especially focus our attention on you during these weeks of Advent. We welcome your presence this morning and invite your guidance as we undertake our Christian countdown to Advent our time of expectant waiting and preparation, the celebration of the Nativity of Christ. Amen. Today is special because it is the first Sunday of Advent. What's Advent? Advent it starts four Sundays before Christmas, and it's a time of waiting, and it's a time of preparing our hearts for the birth of Jesus Christ. Jesus was born on Christmas. That's right. So we light a candle to remember all that Jesus has done for us? Yes. Each Sunday we of Advent, we, we light a candle as a way of remembering Jesus' birth. And we, we prepare to celebrate. On the first Sunday of Advent, we light the candle of hope. Gavin, why don't you light the candle? As we watch the candle burn, we can remember the light and hope that baby Jesus brought to the world so many years ago, and the hope that he still gives each of one, each one of us today. My hope is that the church would continue to be an example of how God wants us to treat others and to love others. I hope that every boy and girl this year gets a Christmas present. I hope that we can all get together and gather and celebrate Christmas. My hope is that everybody stays safe over the holidays. My hope is that uh, initial season will start up. And I hope for much of the same things all of you hope for. 
maybe not the NHL season, but everything else. And I know we are all hoping for family time and things this holiday season. And even if our hopes don't come to fruition and there's a lot of frustration and a disappointment and anger and tension, I hope that we can look past all of that and see all that God has given us and all of the special things he has um, blessed us with this holiday season. Jesus, born to set thy people free from our fears and sins. Release us, let us find our rest in thee. Israel, strength and consolation, hold. Of all the earth thou art, dear desire of every nation, joy of every longing heart. On thy people to
Imagine a world where failure isn't an option, where there are no second chances because there is no other choice, where success is paramount, even when faced with economic instability, political fragility, and inequality. Entrepreneurs who exist in these environments can work their hardest with all of the knowledge and determination they possess and still struggle to get by. At Mida, we imagine a different world. Mida partners with entrepreneurs around the globe to build sustainable businesses that create opportunities for families to give their children a better future. Alongside local partners, we support women, men and youth to move into valuable and equitable roles that aren't dependent on aid so they can become agents of change and leaders in their community. For over 65 years, we have been global leaders in economic development, providing financial services, impact investment, improved technology, business training, and better access to markets for those who have skills but need some extra support for their businesses to flourish and succeed long term. Our focus on business and systems within the agricultural sector is what sets us apart. Striving to help people achieve a decent job, one that provides dignity, equality, a fair income, and safe working conditions. Through partnerships with private and institutional donors, millions of people have been given the tools they need, so they are empowered not just to meet basic needs, but to earn a livelihood, grow their business, and create a sustainable future for themselves, their families, and their communities. Mida, it's more than aid. It's investment in people. It's business solutions to poverty. Hi, everyone. I'm so glad to be able to join you today. It's fun to think about doing something kind of together for the next few Sundays. So this Sunday, for our first Sunday of Advent, we need our little clay pots. I've got a big one. And while I'm talking, or maybe as you listen, after you listen, you can take your pot and decorate it in whatever way you'd like. I've taken our bigger story pot and put our church name on it. In Isaiah 64, verse 8, it says, But now, Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are our potter. All of us are the work of your hand. I think it seems like Isaiah is helping us to remember that God made us. Who we are comes from God. Isaiah is also telling us that God doesn't work alone. He's counting on us to help show the world who God is and what God is about. So I, when I look at these pots, there's nothing fancy about them. Even my decorations aren't very fancy. They're not big either. Well, mine is a little bit bigger, but yours are small. But what things look like isn't important to God. It's not what matters. What makes a pot a good pot isn't what it looks like. A pot is a good pot because it has space inside of it. Because a hot pot is made to hold something. God wants us to be filled with the things that will help us show the world what God is about. So this week, while you're decorating and maybe wondering what we're gonna do with the pot next week, think about how we can be filled with the things that help us show God what he, that help us show the world what God is about. Let's pray. God, our potter, fill each of us, kids and adults, with the things we need to be useful in your kingdom. Amen. And now the prayer of the church and the world. Almighty God, we ask your healing touch and comforting presence for Hilda Weeb, Anne Weeb, Elizabeth Dell, Waldo Schultz, and Ann Kaler during this time of anxiety and lack of physical company. Help them feel your presence and our reaching out. And bring comfort in the memories of positive life experiences for Anne Weeb, family and extended family, at the passing of brother-in-law Martin. And for Alvin and Clara Kaler and Tim and Denise Fast, 
Edgar and Marge Schellenberg, families and extended family, at the passing of Hilda Lepke. We thank you for guidance and connectedness as you looked over our fall meeting, and thank you for the enthusiasm of our church leadership as we review, analyze, and support new church opportunities. And as we look farther afield, there are many reminders that your world faces the uncertainty and challenges of 2020. It's then that we are not walking alone. Thank you for the spiritual and physical shoulder to lean on and guide us. Amen. Good morning. Our scripture for today is from Isaiah chapter 64, verses 1 through 9. If only you would tear open the heavens and come down. Mountains would quake before you like fire igniting brushwood or making water boil. If you would make your name known to your enemies, the nations would tremble in your presence. When you accomplished wonders beyond all our expectations, when you came down, mountains quaked before you. From ancient times, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God but you, who acts on behalf of those who wait for him. You look after those who gladly do right, and they will praise you for your ways. But you were angry when we sinned. 
You hid yourself when we did wrong. We have be all become like the unclean, all our righteous deeds like a menstrual rag. All of us wither like a leaf. Our sins like the wind carry us away. No one calls on your name. No one bothers to hold on to you. For you have hidden yourself from us and have handed us over to our sin. But now, Lord, you are our father. We are the clay and you are the potter. All of us are the work of your hand. Do not rage so fiercely, Lord. Do not hold our sins against us forever. But gaze now on your people, all of us. It is good to gather in the name of Jesus with you. We may not physically be in person, but we are here together in this moment, in this time. Take a breath and think back to March 2020. As COVID began to spread, we were in the season of Lent. As the reality of the virus began to impact our world, our nation, and our community, we were in a season of journeying with Jesus to Jerusalem. As communities went into lockdown and we shifted to virtual worship gatherings, we celebrated Palm Sunday mourned on Good Friday, and rejoiced at the resurrection of our Lord and Savior on Easter Sunday, all in the beginning of the pandemic. And now, the season of Advent is upon us. We are now waiting for the coming of Christ. And we are back in a lockdown, worshiping here together virtually. This is hard. This is painful. Yet, it is in these present circumstances that I find our scripture passage for this morning so impactful. The scripture from Isaiah today is a lament, a crying out to God. And this particular prayer is a part of a longer lament written from the perspective of the entire Israelite community. The voice of lament as one names Israel's state of woe and suffering. They are hurt. They are tired. And they long for God to do something. The beginning of this full prayer of lament details God's redemption's God's redemptive actions in the past, winding from Exodus through the rebellions in the wilderness, offering examples to God of when God brought resolution in the past. These reminders then become the basis for the complaint as the voice of lament cries out to God. These complaints by the one crying out can also be taken as a suggestion of a model that God can use for redemptive actions in the here and the now. Our scripture for this morning picks up this prayer of lament, and it begins with a crescendo in a loud cry that the Lord God Most High would come down and be present with people. If only you would tear open the heavens and come down, if only you would tear open the heavens and come down. Speaking these words aloud, you can't help but hear the pain and the hurts and the deep and desperate longing for God to do something. The pain that Israel is experiencing here is very real. And it is a consequence of a broken and sinful world that is not as it should be. This is the reality that the voice of lament wrestles with. Israel's own sin is another consequence 
of the broken world. And that sin carries Israel away from God like a withered leaf in the wind. The voice of lament for Israel struggles knowing that God has acted on behalf of the righteous and gladly looks after them. So in this sadness of remembering Israel's own struggles and sin, the voice of lament gets angry with God. The voice cries out in verse 7, No one calls on your name. No one bothers to hold on to you. For you have hidden yourself from us and have handed us over to our sin. In pain and in suffering, the voice challenges God and questions God's absence in the time of need. In pain and sadness, anger, suffering abound. So here we are. In the season of Advent, worshiping virtually because a pandemic rages on around us. We are hurting, and we are probably feeling a lot of different emotions right now. There's disappointment, confusion, frustration, worry, anger, sadness. And the feelings go on. We are suffering This pandemic has taken a toll on our lives, and now more so than ever. It's not just affecting the country or the province. Right now, it is affecting our community and our families. And in this broken world, suffering goes far beyond a pandemic. Poverty, war, racism, and ecological injustice all abound. In so many ways for so many people, life is hard right now. And it's okay to say that. It's okay to feel all these different things, to be sad, to be angry, to be disappointed in all that we've lost this year. And... It is good that we cry out to God. And there is a reason why us, along with the Israelites and those of ages past, have cried out and ought to continue to cry out in the midst of pain and suffering. Hope. I think of Paul's words from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. We do not grieve like those who have no hope. We don't mourn like those who do not have hope, but we do mourn. We do feel a sense of loss and it's okay and it's good that we feel that. But we have hope. So when we cry out, we do not cry out like those who have no hope. When we cry, Lord, if you would only tear open the heavens and come down. We cry because we know that God will deliver. We cry out in our pain and our suffering because we know that God will come down again. As with many prayers of lament, the communal voice of lament takes time to remember that God has indeed come down before. In verse three, the voice remembers that when God came down before, he accomplished wonders beyond all their expectations. The mountains, they quaked once before. The voice of lament carries on that from ancient times, no one, no one has seen or heard or perceived any other God but our God. As we sit in this era of suffering, of hardship and pain, take a breath. Remember, where have you seen God previously? Where has the one true God showed up 
in your moment of need before. It may be a little thing, but earlier this year, as Steph and I prepared to cross the border and come back home here, we had no guarantee that we would get across. We had no guarantee. So we prayed. And we knew that hundreds of people on both sides of that border were praying alongside of us. There was no guarantee. So we went on faith. And I can say without a shadow of a doubt that God was present with us in those moments. The crossing went more smoothly than we ever could have dreamed of. We got in, we got all our documents, and got out. The hand of God most certainly dipped down in that moment. Whether it is just last week, or last year, or decades ago, I trust that each one of us has a testimony and has a witness of when God has showed up before. But here's the thing. We don't just stop at remembering. The last part of a prayer of lament looks towards the future. It looks to God for our deliverance. In our scripture today, verses 8 and 9 offer us this hope. These verses offer a reminder to God and to ourselves that the Lord, our God, is both father and potter. We remember that God is a good father and is a good potter and shall care for us as children and as clay. And then verse 9 earnestly seeks that God turns towards us once again. And that God will hear our cries once more. The voice of lament calls on God to gaze upon us, all of us, once more. We cry out to God because we know that God cares for us. We know that God will deliver us. We cry out because our present circumstances shall not last forever. We cry out because we have hope. We have faith in God. Romans chapter 5 verses 1 through 5 offers us this assurance. Therefore, since we have been made righteous through his faithfulness, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have access by faith into this grace in which we stand through him, and we boast in the hope of God's glory. But not only that, we even take pride in our problems because we know that trouble produces endurance. Endurance produces character, and character produces hope. This hope does not put us to shame because the love of God has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, which has been given to us. Through our faith in God, our creator, redeemer, and sustainer, we have hope, even in the midst of pain and suffering. Our faith in God is not a promise of a life free of suffering. Rather, it is a promise that God shall open the heavens and be with us once again. This is what it means to be in the season of Advent. That we, along with the entirety of creation, cry out to God. That we remember what God has done in the past. That we wait and live into the hope that God shall come again once more. So, Let us cry out to God in longing. Let us wait in expectation. And let us hope that our God shall come again once more. Amen. Israel, who 
appears. Oh, come thou day spring, come and cheer our spirits by thine advent here. Disperse the gloomy clouds of night. And death's dark shadows put to flight. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Thou rod of Jesse free, thine own from Satan's tyranny. From depths of hell thy people save, and give them victory. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel, shall come to thee, O Israel. O come, desire of nations, bind all peoples in one heart and mind. Bid envy, strife, and quarrel cease. Fill the whole world with heaven's peace. Rejoice, rejoice. to thee, O Israel. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel, shall come to thee, O Welcome to my home. This is the table where my family gathers to eat meals, to do crafts, to color, to sing. It's a regular daily activity to gather around this table and be together. And likewise, Jesus and his disciples gathered around the table. They ate meals, they fellowshiped, Jesus taught, told them parables, and he was even challenged and asked questions at the table, the ordinary table a common daily occurrence for them. And yet when Jesus blessed the bread and the cup, he made the ordinary holy. So come, let us gather around our tables. If it's a coffee table or an end table, kitchen tables or side tables or even your lap. May our ordinary places become holy as we gather together and share this meal. All are welcome at this table who desire to be in a relationship with Jesus Christ, the seeker and the well-seasoned traveler, the young and the old, those whose sins are public and those whose sins have managed to say, stay hidden. All who come and seek to be nourished are welcome. All who seek wholeness and love are welcome at this table. Let us pray. Blessed are you, gracious God, giver of all life, source of love that knows no boundaries. Your song of wisdom rang true when the whole world began. You bring our longings to birth and you send prophets to awaken in us as your approaching advent comes. We thank you for those who, like Mary, 
had the strength to give birth to your love in the world. For those like the shepherds who dare to seek out the child of Bethlehem. For those like the wise men who dare to challenge violent and oppressive powers. We praise you that your everlasting light is shown in the birth and life of Jesus, in the words and actions of Jesus, in transforming in tenderness and compassion in our homes and at our tables. We join in the Advent prayer of your people, O come, O come, Emmanuel. God of hope, make this bread the means of our rebuilding. Make this cup the medium of our transformation. This table the foundation of our renewal and our community the place of our rebirth. Amen. At this time, you remember Jesus. On the night before he died, when he gathered his disciples around the table, his close friends around a table and took bread, and he broke it and gave thanks, saying, take and eat this whenever you do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup and blessed it and gave thanks and said, this is the new covenant. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Lord, give us clean hearts, forgiving hearts, and praising hearts. Send your spirit to be among us, so that all who eat and drink at your table shall be made one, one body, one people, giving thanks in endless song to you. Amen. So let us eat the body of Christ, the bread of life. the lifeblood of Christ, the club, cup of blessing. Let us pray. Thank you, God, for breaking into our world and pouring into our lives and our experiences. We thank you, God, for this meal of thanksgiving and the stories of love, grace, and hope that it tells. Amen.
as we prepare to leave this time of worship and go into the season of Advent, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace and a hope that our God shall come down once again.